Now to our special interview with Russell Young. This author of several books has a lifetime of stories and experiences that the next generation needs to hear. Dancy Moeller has more. Well, it is quite an honor to be joined by our next guest. His name is Russell Young. He is an author and um, Russell, I have been reading your book and have loved it. I've been taking it outside in the morning and um, just enjoying nature and, and just getting into the pages of your book because there's so much that speaks to me um, personally. And you have go got quite a story. I can't wait to it talk is. about yeah. um, how you happen to write this book and all these um, yeah. books that you have with you. So yeah. thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Well, but but yeah. th this particular book on wisdom yes. is something that has bothered me for years. People don't know what wisdom is. No. Well, they uh, think it's being smart. That's yes. what. Wait, you look at the dictionary. It has two words, wise, that's a lot of help, <laughs> plus knowledge. Yeah. That's it. And I found out through your, um, your writings that we could be so knowledgeable about so much in this world. Very good. But we're not wise, are Very we? Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, you can have knowledge will get you a good job. Mm -hmm. And as a school teacher and business that I taught, retail marketing, knowledge will get you a good job. Yeah. But wisdom will get you a good life. Oh, absolutely. That's the secret right there. And that's what I'm trying to show in that book, how this wisdom can be gained. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, let's take us back to um, how you happen to be where you are right now. Um, you are a school teacher. Yes. And... Um, and I think that that was probably a profession that was wonderful for you, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yes. Oh, I dearly loved it. Yeah. And so that's what you went to school for. Yes, at Heidelberg. At Heidelberg. And then um, you did become a teacher. And then you got another calling, a much greater calling, didn't you? Wow. Did I? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was in the middle of my sixth year of teaching uh -huh. in St. Mary's where I graduated from high school, in fact, St. Mary's, and uh, the, the minister of our church came into my classroom after the kids were all gone and told me that they needed me to go to Ghana as a missionary in Africa. And he knew I had a business major from Heidelberg, but, but he, he, I knew this was December, two weeks before Christmas. And, and, and I knew the superintendent wouldn't allow it. Right. I went down and talked to him and he said, go. He was a good Christian man. He said, go. When you get back, your job will still be here. Because that was your greatest worry, is whether or not you would have a job to return That's to. That's for sure. Yeah. I wanted to come back. I was head baseball coach, and I wanted to come back. You know, I loved that, too. And uh, he said, go. Your job will be here. And they didn't know. They, it was just temporary because they had to find two full-time career missionaries to manage two hospitals in Ghana. So we didn't know how long it would be, but it took three years. That was kind of a surprise. My goodness. Who went? Just you and a my friend? My wife and, and my daughter. Okay. Yep. And they were very supportive of you, or did very, they think you were crazy? Very, no, they were right behind me all the way. Is Mom and Dad, I got letters all the time from them. Oh, good. Everybody was appreciative, yes. And what did you learn from that time? Uh, primarily, how wonderful people are in other countries. And I loved the Ghanaian people. In fact, I wasn't there but six months, and I was already preaching in their language. And, and I loved them, and they really appreciated me, and we had a real good mix right there. Yeah. Did you know I had a, a pen pal from Ghana when I was in really? I think, second grade? Yes, I did, uh, which is cool. kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. But um, So they were, they were open to hearing oh, the word from oh, you. Yes. They loved us. They loved oh. me. I can't get over how they appreciated us. When I would look at them, they would just have the biggest, they would just stand there and look at me and smile. Yeah. They just loved to have me around. And, and I, I managed the hospital, so I had all the staff, and, and I had to learn their language. Then I had a crew of maintenance men, and I learned that, you know, spoke And that's with not them. what you went to school for. No, my goodness. Oh, oh my gosh. But, but I loved them, and I loved every minute that I was there. Yeah. So what did you come back with then? What did what would you say was your were your learning po points or your learning moments there? From Ghana, you yeah. mean? Oh my goodness! The only thing I could say would be that that I felt like 
uh, we should treat everybody with that same love, uh -huh. uh, that they loved me and that I loved them. And so the, now I have that in my heart to try to give everybody that same love and respect that I gave the, the Gunnians and that they gave me. Absolutely. That, that really helped me understand people a whole lot better. So yeah. you are writing books. You have yeah. you have become an author in the meantime, oh, yeah. and um, you know I can just I I feel you so deeply, um, and and what you are trying to share with us in in your in your words in your book, um, and again as you have said, you have known people who are so knowledgeable, yes. who may seem so smart yes. in yes. this world, right? But what do they lack? Yep. You know they lack wisdom. Yes. And how do you get that? There you are. It's a good question. <laughs> I love that question <laughs> because it is, it is now it is from there are two sources, mm -hmm. primarily from God's holy word. God is that word, and and primarily we learn through that word wisdom. Now, mm -hmm. uh, what is the difference? What, what what would you say is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Right. Okay. Knowledge is science, history, math, bookkeeping, mm -hmm. yes. these things. Practical, okay. right? Yes, very. Now, knowledge then is enhanced. Mm -hmm. It is, let's say, multiplied or magnified mm -hmm. by Christ. Wisdom is. Through the word, knowledge then becomes wisdom. Yeah. And you get the wisdom by the awesome, awesome graciousness of God provides the wisdom. But the, the secret and the odd part about it is for you and me is the fact that wisdom doesn't come with a big bang and a band or, you know, none of this. No. Very quietly. It's a whisper. It just comes to you uh, before you even realize it. Yeah. But the more you read, the more you study. There are two sources, the Bible and other people. And you mentioned you go through also and talk about the different men in the Bible. Oh, yeah. and who are wise and who listened and when it didn't make any sense in are. the world but they they quieted themselves long enough right. to hear yeah and um who's I'm just, your best example of that i would say that um it, oh my goodness abraham is starting there. yeah starting there yep. um i'm up to isaac oh, right my. now and um but they all you know <sighs> Will you get to Joseph? That's where I'm at right now, is I'm on Joseph. So I, <laughs> I can't wait. I can't oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, he's the one that really, really gets to me. And they're all men, Wisdom. too, that, that yep. you never would have thought would have been chosen, but because they, they were obedient and That's right. they were wise, That's they were right. able to do great things. Boy, what wisdom does for you. I know. And, and uh, one, one thing about it, one, once you have this wisdom, mm -hmm. it teaches you and goes along with you, and you become, uh, you develop self-control. Absolutely. And once you have wisdom, you, can, you have your control, and you also, you're, you're not selfish. Right. And you can't be selfish if you have wisdom, you're not selfish. And, and not, not only that, you're truthful, you're honest with people, and, and, and you're nonviolent. Yes. And as That's you said in the book, too, it's your fixed point. Yes. It's your fixed point yes. in yes. life. Yes. You know? Yes, my brother's in the Navy and he yes. explained that to me. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. It does. It really does. It it's a, a lot fantastic of thing to think about. Now, I want to mention mm -hmm. the fact that there are many, this is like a gold mine reading the Bible. To me, I'm, I'm in there digging. Oh, sure. Looking for precious jewels. Mm -hmm. And wisdom is the precious jewel. And it brings about to you what you need in this life to have a good life. Mm. And the precious jewels are there, such as peace. Mm -hmm. Boy, how many people have peace today? Can you name a few? They're scarce. <laughs> That's right. Full, living, heartfelt inner peace. Inner peace, yes. Yeah, inner peace. Yeah. Well, Russell Young, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you. I could talk My with pleasure. you the rest of the day, My but pleasure. we are running out of time. My and um, I want to recommend his books to all of you at home, and um, hopefully we'll see another one. Yeah. In the bookstore, the parable. Okay, parable bookstore, we got you. <laughs> all right. And you'll see another one in a few months. Okay, okay? thanks for joining us. Thank you, all my right. pleasure. Back to you. 
Thank you, Dancy. You can pick up your own copy of Russell Young's latest book at Gifts of Joy in Lima.